Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and um, one thing I want to remind everybody about is we're only about 60 days away from the start of the 2013 Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course which is taught by Dr. McDougall and Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Ralph Moss and all of the greats in the plant-based world in addition to um, uh, many courses that are added to it on vaccinations and musculoskeletal issues and, and other things you know the answer to everything isn't just to eat more broccoli so it's a pretty balanced course in terms of how to handle all kinds of things that uh, take place in a clinical setting so if you're interested in that you can go to our website and check out the catalog that's posted there or contact our office and we'll be happy to discuss it with you so I have two things I want to talk about today. Um, one is, is the lowly potato who still continues to get bashed all the time. You know, I, I think about reviewing the food pyramid with new groups of people, many of whom you can just see the expression of shock on their face when we get to the part where we talk about it's okay to eat potatoes. And invariably, somebody will raise their hand and say, well, you can't mean white potatoes because certainly white potatoes and white foods for that matter are bad for you, right? Well, actually white potatoes are good for you, but I wanna take a step back from the potato issue and talk a little bit about this white food issue, which makes people almost hysterical and a bit irrational. Um, people have assumed that if you eat white rice, you know, they almost make it sound like you're going to be instantaneously struck by death. And um, if you eat pasta that's not made from whole wheat flour in a restaurant someplace, oh my gosh, terrible things are going to happen. Well, here's the thing. If you're home and you have some control over the situation, eat brown rice, eat whole wheat pasta. Um, if you're out in a restaurant and the only rice available is white rice, eat it and for crying out loud, enjoy your, enjoy your meal. I mean. People are not sitting in my office to discuss health issues because they're eating white rice instead of brown rice. It's because they're eating chicken and salmon instead of rice, not because of the type of rice. So I think we, not, we need to not be so focused on that. As for the white, brain, white bread and pasta, again, whole grains are better, I would agree. But um, I actually covered this last year, kind of an interesting study that showed that people could lower their weight and their cholesterol while eating white bread in replacement of animal foods. Now the drops in weight and cholesterol were higher for people eating the whole grain products, but those consuming white bread still improved their health. And I'm not telling you this because I want you to go out and start eating white bread. I'm telling you this because this um, almost um, uh, ridiculous fear of white food is a little bit misplaced and um, I, I think people take it a little bit too far. Now let's get back to the potatoes. I do want to talk about potatoes today. One of my favorite John McDougall quotes is, the problem with potatoes is the company they keep. In other words, fried potatoes and potato chips, they're accompanied by a lot of oil. And baked potatoes, what do we usually do to those? We put butter and sour cream. So it's not the potatoes, it's the added fat and the toppings that are the problem. So if you take a plain baked potato, for example, it has about 168 calories, it has no fat, it's high in potassium and fiber. And we erroneously, we see reports, I should say, that are erroneous saying that eating potatoes is, um, uh, is bad for diabetics because they're high on the glycemic index. And really there are two false assumptions on which that's based. The first thing is that the glycemic index is not a great method for choosing foods. In fact, uh, milk and ice cream are low glycemic foods. They're not so good for you. Um, and many foods that we know are good for you are high glycemic foods. But I think the bigger issue is that the glycemic index measures foods eaten one at a time. And that's not how people consume food. They consume potatoes with salad and, and, uh, and many different foods. And nobody has any idea what the glycemic index is for these virtually infinite combinations of different foods. So it's really not a good way to choose food. And I don't think it has much relevance for people in their day-to-day -day diet. So if you like potatoes, and I don't meet very many people who don't, and in fact, everybody should be really happy that we're giving you permission to eat potatoes. If you like them, eat them. You're not going to eat weight. You're not going to gain weight eating potatoes, I should say. Most people would have to eat between 7 and 15 pounds of potatoes every day just to maintain their current weight, which means you'd probably get tired of eating them before you would ever get to the place of weight gain. They're great just baked, you know, maybe with a little sea salt on top. Uh, you can top them with soups or salsas. And if anybody's thinking right now, well, maybe you 
think they're great, just plain, but I don't like them that way. I'm used to fried or with butter or sour cream. If you start eating much more basic food that's well seasoned, you'll be surprised at how much that food becomes appealing over time. You know, it just takes time to get used to it. But anyway, we need to stop bashing the poor potato and start eating more potatoes. And based on how much people like potatoes, they really should look at that as good news. Now this next topic is a little bit more serious and it has to do with this breast cancer issue which I've spent a lot of time on. I spent a lot of time convincing women that they do not want to get mammograms, not a good plan. And uh, this newest study uh, really goes along with that. It shows that um, radiation as part of treatment for breast cancer increases the risk of heart disease. This isn't the only study that's shown this result. It just happens to be the most recent one I've read. And uh, researchers in uh, both Sweden and Denmark has ex assessed the health outcomes of a little over 2,000 women who were treated for breast cancer that included radiation treatment between the years 1958 and 2001. And out of these, 963 of these women had coronary events such as heart attack, bypass surgery, or death from heart disease. That's 44% of the women experienced an event. Now, about 44% of the events took place within 10 years of diagnosis, 33% occurred 10 to 19 years later, and 23% occurred 20 years later or more. And the increase was dose dependent. In other words, the more radiation the women got, the, more, the higher the, the risk of developing heart disease. Now, there are many, and women who had uh, cancer in the left breast, by the way, were at even higher risk because the left breast is closer to the heart, and being overweight and smoking increased the risk as well as the radiation. Now, the significance of this study is twofold. And the first one is the long follow-up period. Often cancer patients are only followed for five years, and if they're still alive at five years, there's declared, they are declared survivors. And this is really good for the cancer industry because uh, many cancer patients will live to five years, but outcomes beyond five years are often entirely different. High rates of recurrence and also um, health issues that develop as a result of the treatment, in this case radiation. The other issue that I think we have to talk about and, and uh, the refusal of the cancer industry and the Cancer Association to address this is just very frustrating to me is that many, if not most, of the women who receive radiation as part of their cancer treatment don't really have breast cancer. Uh, you might remember that last year I did a very long series on Peter Gotchi's book on mammography and in that book and also in Gilbert Welch's book Overdiagnosed and in his, um, his first book Should I Get Tested for Cancer. All three of these books discuss the fact that mammography doesn't reduce the risk of dying from breast cancer but it does increase the risk of being diagnosed with pseudo cancer, which is cancer that will never kill you and in many cases probably shouldn't be treated, but we treat it anyway. And so it is almost certain um, that, that, uh, that many of the women who developed um, uh, heart disease or died from it in this follow-up study that I just discussed uh, were women who were diagnosed with pseudo cancer and so you have, a, you have over diagnosing and then over treatment with radiation. So the bottom line is some of these women died from treatment for a disease that they really didn't have. And I find that really appalling and it shouldn't be tolerated. And um, one statistic from Gachi's book that I'll remind you about is uh, some of the Cochrane Collaborations research showed that for every woman who is saved by mammography, and it does save some lives, but the problem is for everyone you save, six women die of heart disease from the treatment. And while I would never want to discount the value of that one life, what are we going to say to the families of the other women um, who die as a result of exposure to this fairly useless test for most people? So just another reason why women should think a lot long and hard before they make a decision about mammography. And um, you know, we live in America, I'm all for people making the choices that they think are best for them. I just want them to make informed choices. And I think one of the most difficult things we hear in this office all the time when people come to see us is, gosh, if I'd known then what I know now, I would have made different decisions about what I was going to do. And I'm all for knowing now instead of later on when you may not be able to do much about the outcome. 
All right, well, that wraps it up for this week. So I guess the take-home points here, don't get a mammogram, do eat some potatoes. And as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week.